I'm back down here to work on the Hendy tonight. I'm just gonna not gonna do too much. Time. I don't think I'm just gonna clean off a lot of this heavy crud that's on top of the lathe so that I can take this top cover off and look inside the quick change gearbox. I just don't want all that crap falling all on the inside there. I've never had one of these covers off before, but it doesn't look like there's much holding it on. It's not. I don't know if it's designed to slide open like this, or if you're just supposed to... Oh, I see. This is this unscrews. Chinese puzzles or something. <laughs> I, I don't know what this does. <laughs> it's a little neural ball. So it's obviously the thumb screw. Uh, finger tight. It's got a little pin. And that was threaded in here. So that must be just another oil galley. It must be another one of these things you take out and screw the oil into. Which is fine, but it doesn't explain to me how this comes off. Because I'll tell you, it sure seems like it's swiveling on. So obviously nothing on this side. Taking that out doesn't seem to make any difference as far as helping me get this cover off. Let's pull it straight up on this side isn't doing anything either. Get something to scrape the top of that, see if there's a screw head that I that I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I didn't pry up on that too hard. Makes me wonder if there's a screw missing from this side. No, apparently not. Apparently this whole thing's held on by just one screw. And then we'll put that little oil cap deal back in there before we lose it. There's should change gears. Lyra they be in all their glory. So pretty straightforward how this works. You slide this lever back and forth into different slots, you're engaging a different one of these gears. And all of these gears are on the lead screw. So uh, that's, a, that's a nice little chunk of steel that shouldn't be on a tooth. Anyways, so there's your deal there. And I'm just gonna go couple times around looking at the teeth to verify what I had already hoped which was that there are no chip teeth all right so now that I've got this open and I can see how this is I feel more comfortable about attempting to remove the lead screw now so I'm gonna try and uh, see if this little collar right here looks like there might be a set screw right in there I'm gonna see if I loosen that set screw if this collar will come off and then maybe the whole lead screw will slide out that way I cannot see any kind of a head in this hole right here. Ah, there, on this side. There's the screw. That hole on the other side must be... Oh, I got a feeling that hole on the other side is for a spanner wrench to go in. You know, one of them special wrenches that kind of like shaped like the way my finger is right now with a pin in it and you 
I think you're supposed to engage that engage that hole right there and maybe unscrew this why do I have a feeling that's what boy you know when I was at the flea market last weekend I think I saw I think I saw one that would fit this could have had it for probably a buck or two hmm what if I just kind of wedge this screwdriver in here? No, that ain't gonna work. Arr, arr, don't. I got a feeling I'm not taking that off tonight. Well, luck would have it, it's not so tight that I really need a wrench. I'm using this flat bottom punch and uh, tapping it. Looks like I'm not totally sure, but I think it is turning on the shaft. Of course, if it is, it'll clearly start to get looser and looser as it comes around. I, uh, I've been turning it and turning it and turning it and the lead screw grabbed the wire that I have uh, it tied to to hang up and actually the wire wrapped around it so now it doesn't want to turn. That's a definitely, uh, that definitely seems like it's a fine thread. Now, if this was really tight, I wouldn't use these pipe, uh, this pipe wrench because uh, the teeth are going to mar this and make it really look like a hack mechanic. Not unlike myself, I was working on this, but I've actually got that pretty loose now, so I don't have to put a lot of force on that to turn that. It's just not quite loose enough for me to unscrew it. Not finger tight yet. It's about to be though. And I tell you, I had somewhere, I had an old monkey wrench around here somewhere. That's the kind of has the flat jaws that are perfectly flat, no teeth on them. And that would be a perfect little tool for a job like this right now. Another one of those kind of antique tools that I don't really think about saving. And then you come to a job like this and I think, ah, oh, you know, I remember that. I had no teeth on it. That'd be perfect for this. You know, I could probably grip it just enough to still turn it, but I wouldn't have to worry that if it slipped, that it, you know, made a real nasty mess out of the uh, teeth. I mean, out of the uh, outside of this. Although that's still smooth, easy peasy, Japanesey. Let's see. It worked out well. All right. <clears throat> so now. I think that whole lead screw can now be slid out that way and the gears will want to come out one at a time as I slide it. That's what I think. Of course I could be wrong. So obviously I want to take the most care possible in uh, not damaging these threads. So Whacking it with this dead blow mallet. It is moving slowly. I just stopped for a minute. There's a caller over here that I um, I wanted to check and uh, clean off and make sure there wasn't a set screw on that but I don't see anything on that one. Uh, so I don't think that's holding it. It just seems like it's a pretty darn tight fit. I think that may be just my design, I guess. So, I'm running out of room here to tap this. See how this is opening up right here? 
that's how much it's moved over that and of course the fact that now the threaded end here is barely sticking out past that so it's moving I'm just not convinced that there isn't maybe something that's still locking it that I'm missing well I'm pretty satisfied that there's nothing down this end that's actually holding this it's just the press fit through the gears that I think is holding me up so I put a little bit more force on this so I'm changing from the dead blow hammer to a punch that will sit the tip of that will sit right in the little countersunk hole in the center here and that way I can put a little more force on this and it's moving what I'm a little worried about is this keep hitting this gear a little bit but you can even see this has got a cutaway right here for that gear to clear I wonder if that gear will actually slide out this way I've got about one more inch or three quarters to one more inch to go before I find out yeah, the further in it goes the easier it moves I believe that's the first gear is now how can I tell that gear is now past the point because it's no longer keyed to the shaft that's why I'm able to spin it like this as opposed to these are still all keyed what's happening now is this end of the shaft is no longer held in this part right here so the whole shaft is tilting up like that that's why this gear just started to come up this way there's a bushing right there this isn't quite clearing that shaft completely yet but I need to prop up the other end of the lead screw not being supported enough. Now that one's down that one's clear of the shaft, but it will not fit out this way. Ah uh, that means that all of these gears are designed well not all of them. These small ones can obviously come out this top. I was going to say these bigger gears have to drop down through the bottom, but it just occurred to me that if I can keep going and take some of these smaller gears out, I'll be able to actually turn this gear sideways and take it right out the top. So, just took a little bit extra thinking there for a second. That's what I deduced. I've got another problem, which is that my punch is running out of length. <laughs> I'm gonna need a longer punch. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Take those greasy gloves off long enough to have a little tea break. Nastrovia. First three won't fit. This one should. There we go. There's one. I gotta find something to put those in. The joy. Stay that way. Now that's interesting. These don't want to stay separated. That seems awfully loose now. I'm wondering now if that'll just come out. I think that the bushing, yeah, 
Must have been the bushing on this side was the other press fit. I think now if I undo my wire that's supporting the uh, lead screw down the other end there, I could pull this whole thing right on out. Interesting, this is almost like it's an assembly. Oop, no it's not, they were just stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, property of the uh, extreme smoothness of the, smoothness of the two surfaces with the oil creating surface <laughs> surface surface tension must have been sticking these together. Fooled me. Fooled me into thinking for a second there that was actually that that was made as an assembly like with three gears together. And the more I think about it, the more ridiculous that would be to make it that way because if you chipped a tooth on one of them, you'd have to replace the whole assembly. And it'd be a lot harder to have that assembly made than it would be even production-wise. I would think it'd be harder to make that assembly than to make one lousy gear. This wire on here wound so tight around the lead screw that I actually get it like to the point where it actually moves with the thread so I'll just loosen it all together. You don't need to see me do that. Trust me. How much time do we have? Will you have something on at 10? No. Yeah, I'm just going to wash up. Well, that's going to conclude this evening's edition of As the Lathe Turns. i got to go watch some Breaking Bad. We just got working our way through the series. We just got the DVD in for Season 3, Episode 1. 